Before we begin, I just want to thank you all for 1,000 subscribers. I know it's nothing in the grand scheme of things, but it means the world to me. Emperor Caligula is infamous for being one of the worst emperors in Roman history. Known for making his horse consul, killing and torturing a lot of people, and having lots of sex with his sister. But the Mad Emperor was not always as crazy as he's made out to be. In fact, a lot of the things that led up to him becoming as insane as he was are more interesting than the things he did while he was insane. First, to understand why Caligula turned out to be such a monster, we have to talk about a totally different emperor, Tiberius. Tiberius was, to put it lightly, a massive dick. Tiberius was hated by virtually everyone, and the only reason he came to power was because the emperor before him, Augustus, did not have anybody to fill his seat on the throne. Augustus made Tiberius, who was a commander at the time, promise that he would adopt General Germanicus, who was beloved by all Roman people, so that when Augustus died, everybody would sit easy knowing that Tiberius would soon kick the bucket and the beloved Germanicus would sit on the throne. However, right after Augustus' death, Tiberius pulled the old suck my dick. He instead had General Germanicus assassinated and sent his wife off to live in a faraway island decreeing that she could never marry again. Her elder two sons were sent to prison, where one died of starvation and the other committed suicide. And Caligula was the youngest son of General Germanicus. His three sisters were all small out to live, and all were escorted to live with their grandmother. So for 12 years, Caligula lived a normal life, until at the age of 19, he was summoned by Tiberius to come to the private island of Capri. And Tiberius now informed Caligula that he would be living with the man who had killed his entire family. This was probably all some cruel game of Angry Birds that Tiberius was playing, where he would pull the I don't want to play with you anymore whenever he got bored of Caligula. And boy, you did not want to see Tiberius bored. So what did Tiberius do for fun? Well, for starters, he would have massive orgies with underage boys and girls who after he had his way with, would have hurled off of cliff sides down to their deaths. As aforementioned, he would have random people publicly tortured, and he would also rape random men and women from the streets. Because why not? And this was the world that Caligula was brought into. But then something happened while Caligula was on the island. Something unexpected. Tiberius actually came to really like Caligula and allowed him to have his own orgies and torturing sessions. And through these orgies and torturing sessions, Caligula decided, that man, that man is my heir to the throne. So when Tiberius died, with some speculation that it was Caligula strangling him with a pillow, all of Rome threw off their hats and had a massive party. Because now, the son of the beloved General Germanicus was emperor. So this is where Caligula goes insane and starts killing people, right? WRONG! In the beginning, the entire population of Rome could not get enough of Caligula. Within his first month of emperor, he raised all of the army's wages, lowered all taxes, stopped public executions, and held massive circuses and gladiator events constantly, with these events having free food. So if you were a Roman citizen, within the span of a month, you went from being fearful that you're gonna die every single second of your day because you breathed wrong, to, oh, I'm going to go to this gladiator event and watch a man get mauled by a lion while I eat this fire-ass bread from that bakery over there for free because the emperor said so. However, within the first year of his reign, Caligula fell violently ill. For a month, he teetered on the edge of life and death. The people were crying in the streets, and the Senate begged the gods to take their lives instead of his. And these prayers were answered, as Caligula miraculously got better. However, Caligula was a changed man. He believed he had been poisoned, and he was going to let the whole world know his wrath. His first act back was to invite all the senators to an audience, and ask them when they were going to do it. The senators, being very confused, asked Caligula what he meant. To which Caligula responded, <laughs> Your life is nothing! You serve zero purpose! You should kill yourself now! The senators, because of their promise, were forced to all kill themselves under the threat that their families would be killed if they did not. Caligula took to wearing women's clothes. 
and began having his own version of fun. He would force senators and random passerby to do strenuous athletic acts at his whim, such as right, hitting the Dougie for left, a real one. Left. He began throwing parties where he would invite many guests and then pick a random married woman who he would take into his bedchambers and proceed to hit the soldier boy on. He would force her to return to her husband as if nothing had happened. And speaking of sex, Caligula wanted it a lot. For example, he was invited to a wedding where he found the bride so attractive that he ordered her to marry him instead. He hit the quan on her, divorced her the next morning, and decreed that she could not marry her original husband. However, the most famous affair he had was with his sister, Julia Drusilla. Drusilla was made the emperor's wife, and while she didn't technically have a choice, she did so willingly. And when she died a year later, Caligula, in his heartbroken state, made her a god and forced people to bow down and worship her. From this point forward, Caligula went really insane. With one account saying that while Caligula was hosting a massive banquet, he began cackling wildly. When the guests asked him why he was laughing so hard, he replied, I've just thought that if I said the word, you'd all have your throats cut. <laughs> a short while later, Caligula did another one of his most famous acts, in making his horse consul, or leader of the senate. This was most likely to mock a senator's intelligence, which, I gotta say, it's kinda funny. And when the treasury was running really low on money, Caligula instated the same treason trials that Tiberius had, only this time, he somehow made it worse. He would seize whoever he wanted's land and money, and either send them into exile, or have them torturously executed. He ordered the executioners to make the executions as long and gruesome as possible. The relatives of the person who was being killed were taken where they were forced to laugh and cheer under threat that they would meet the same fate. So when Caligula went to the frontier to do some conquering, the senate and the praetorians, who were the emperor's guard, began to talk to each other about getting a new emperor. So when Caligula returned from the frontier talking about how he couldn't wait to kill more of the Roman people, the praetorians had finally had enough. While Caligula was exiting a gladiatorial match, a unit of praetorians came up to him, took their swords and stabbed him over and over and over again. And so the reign of the mighty, perverted, and bloody Caligula was brought to an end.